Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Gone? Here. Mr. McGough? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third, Third order. order. Third order. 3A, minutes of the Firefighters Pension Commission meeting held December 11th, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Any notes? Clerk not notes this evening, this Mr. McGough? No. Thank you. Um, do any council members have announcements at this time? Uh, yes, I'll, I have one. Um, the Schaefer Family Fire Relief Fundraiser. Uh, as we know, this is a family who suffered a, a fire loss on Price Street in West Scranton. This will be held Saturday, February 1st, from 7 until 10 p.m. at Haggerty's Tavern, which is on North Main Avenue and West Side. Stop out and have a great time all while contributing to a great cause. We are also accepting donations for the family, clothing, monetary donations, or even a toy for one of the children. Clothing or other donations can be dropped off at Representative Marty Flynn's office at 409 North Main Avenue, or you can call Kim Toy at 570-687-4055, or Mike Toy at 570-687-4055, 687-8808. We are also accepting raffle prizes to be raffled at the fundraiser. If you are interested in helping with the fundraiser, you can also contact Mike or Kim. And uh, we would appreciate anyone that can help out. Thank you. The Dante Literary Thanks. Society at 1918 Prospect Avenue in Southside will be having a chicken dinner on Saturday, February 8th. Um, from 4.30 to 7.30. It's $11, eat-in and take-out is available. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, have one other from the uh, Fortis Institute of Dental Hygiene. The Fortis Institute Dental Hygiene Clinic is conducting a, um, a service for children ages three to 15 uh, exams, x-rays, cleaning, sealants, fluoride treatments. Um, services are offered by appointment only. Um, please, to make an appointment, please call 570-955-4015 during their clinic hours, which are Monday to Thursday, 9.30 to 5.30. Uh, it also says that children must be accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. Um, I know this has been offered in the past. Um, the Fortis Institute of Dental Hygiene Clinic is located at 519 Ash Street in Scranton. Um, on tonight's uh, agenda, a uh, number of new items. Um, first, uh, 5B is a... Um, an app or a, a request to receive funds from uh, from the United Neighborhood Centers for the 500 um, Cedar 500 project. Um, that is an ongoing project, and this is the last phase of the project and the, the last funding for for that particular part of the project. Um, 5C is for a grant application for um, supplemental, supplemental funding for basically the business administrator's office 
these are things that were were discussed during the budget process um, in 2013 uh, the city is making a grant application um, through DCED and under the uh, kind of approval of DCED for these for these funds um, also uh, item 6b which is the uh, extension of the deadline for the discount period on real estate taxes uh, we are going to assuming that this uh, passes in sixth order we are going to ask that it be moved to seventh order so that it can coincide with the approval of the millage rates and that they can then be forwarded to the tax office so that the tax bills can be sent out along with the notice of the extension of the um, discount rate or the discount period and I believe that is all for the agenda fourth order citizens participation uh, first speaker on the list Bill Jackowitz good evening Scranton City Council and Emil welcome back good evening okay uh, some some good some good things I want to talk about here uh, I've been waiting for 8,021 days to hear salary and sustainability mentioned in the same word and today the business administrator mentioned that on some new salaries I've been talking about su su sustainability and salaries for a long time from this podium podium it was nice to hear that those two words mentioned together at the caucus this evening also city gets pension break I take that as meaning good news I've been waiting long 8,021 days to hear that too so I take that as being good news that, that I think this one the taxpayers won one I hope anyway I hope I'm reading this right and most importantly of all I read in today's paper that Mr. McGough appeared before the county commissioners to seek cooperation with the with tackling the many problems facing facing Scranton about time I've been addressing this for a long time I've suggested many years from this podium that city council county commissioner school board and everyone get together and talk and, and work things out to make things easier for the taxpayers and mr. McGough I want to congratulate you for going to the county commissioner's office and hopefully we can progress from this we need to get the school board involved in this we need to get everybody else involved in this and I still suggest that we hold a town hall meeting either at the Scranton High School or somewhere where we get the county commissioners we get the school board and city council and the mayor together and allow the citizens of Scranton to ask them questions I really I really believe that that will help we need to get the citizens of Scranton and taxpayers of Scranton involved in this okay uh, okay now as far as uh, we need to really think about this when it comes to the delinquent taxes and stuff you know 12 percent of, of, of delinquent taxes is pretty much built into the tax system and what I mean by that is about 12 percent of the property owners in the city of Scranton are from out of town and out of state and I firmly believe that they're they're not going to pay their taxes they're, they're really not so you can look at an 88 percent tax collection pretty much on a yearly basis because most of the uh, landlords who live out of state live out of city they're really not concerned about their properties in Scranton so unless you can come up with a way to, to collect that 12 percent I'm pretty I'm, I, I, I really think you need to build that 12 percent in and only expect about 88 percent property tax collection on a yearly basis because they're just not going to pay their taxes they don't care if you take the property tear it down or do whatever you want with it because they're not they're not, never going to come back to Scranton uh, you know uh, the Pennsylvania Economy League are, are we gonna work a lot close closer with the Pens Pennsylvania Economy League I mean it sounded like from the caucus meeting that that we are and uh, I mean w you know maybe we need to get them back in here maybe we can get a representative from them to come in maybe quarterly or semi-annually and I just interrupt first sure go ahead, ahead. Mr. Jackowitz um, we meet with Pell every week well I understand that but I mean but the citizens are not are not aware of that. The majority of the okay. citizens of Scranton are not aware of that 
I'm saying, let's get the citizens involved. They're the ones paying the bills. They're the ones who pay the taxes. Let's get the citizens involved so that they know what's going on within the city. Because we've been told so many different stories and so many different ways of doing things. I know that you meet with them on a weekly basis, but majority of the citizens in the city of Scranton don't know that. Uh, what's the status of, 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 of the loans? Are we making any progress on the loans? And what I mean is the people who we've loaned the money to. You know, it sounds like uh, we have a lot of delinquent loans out there, and we need to get that money back. I mean, the Hilton still owes us $3 million. Are we ever going to get that? Probably not. The, the, the uh, Steamtown Mall, you know, we made a deal with them. We cut their interest for a couple years, a few years back. What's going on with the Steamtown Mall? Are we getting any money back from them people? Are they paying their loans on time? Are they current? Are they up to date? We need the money. The money needs to come to the city now. Not two years from now, not three years from now, but now. We need the money now. And what's the status on the surveillance cameras? A few years ago, three, four, five years ago, we spent $250,000 on surveillance cameras that we put out throughout the city. There's a couple in Southside and other parts of the city. And the last time I heard that no one was monitoring them, so basically we wasted $250,000 on surveillance cameras. Are those cameras being used? And if not, why are they not being used? And if there's no one available to monitor them, why isn't there anybody available to monitor them? And why did we spend $250,000 on them? So, thank you. Thank you. Before you begin, could I just mention one other thing I, sure, I forgot to prior? Um, item, um, item 7E on the agenda uh, is, is going to be amended, uh, and it basically what it does is it changes the, the time frame in which the refuse bill can be paid. It extends the second payment from, what was it, July 1st to September 1st. But I just wanted to mention that. I forgot to do that before. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Andy Sprague says, Scranton, fellow Scrantonians, the paper printed a good synopsis of this TAN. We borrowed $12.5 million, and we're paying back almost $14 million. We borrowed $22 million at the same 9%. So technically, out there, if we add up the 22 and the 12 and a half, we got close to 35 million in loans out there at 9 percent. How sustainable do you think that is? And the unions are on our back to do something about the awards they got from the courts. And you went out into the marketplace and try to borrow another 22 million at 9%, you can see what a terrible burden is going to be on the taxpayers of Scranton. That 9.5% in them fees they charge shows you how bad the city is and how bad we are in debt. But I didn't hear an answer from any of it, but, well, any of the old people on council about what we can do to do anything with it. There's a lot of things I heard uh, the counselor, I guess the advisor they hired down at the chamber, mentioned the parking authority very lightly at two million debt for God knows how long. But he didn't mention that the garages are falling apart. And if they ain't brought up to where they should be, we're going to take a total loss on the garages. They'll be tearing them down long before they're paid. I mean, there's a lot of problems. I realize somewhere along the line, you're going to have to get after the employees. I know that. That's coming. Anybody that can add one and one and get two realize that. We just can't afford it like it was and like it will be. But you got to remember, when a lot of these things were passed, 
the employees are only making a dollar fifty two dollars an hour they're very low paid that's why a lot of these things went into effect now the their pay has been brought up pretty good where they're no longer getting that minimal pay in fact they're almost twice as much as the average worker in the city so something along the line is going to have to be done there and I guess the mayor that was the reason why he wants to hire that consultant for the unions into the labor I can understand that because man that man is going to have to help hell of a fight because something ought to be done and the problem is how do you balance safety with cost that's where the problem arises you want the city to be safe but you want it to be at affordable cost so someone along the line somebody's going to have to get a real real sharp pencil and see what they can do because like it is now whatever you do up there is, is it doesn't make a bit of difference we're going to slide into that abyss or maybe that sinkhole up there in south side but we're heading that direction and rapidly so somewhere along the way somebody has to come up with a lot of different ideas i told you once many times try to get the unions to accept the liability of so many properties in the city and then lease them back that would cut down to 21 or 22 million that you face and have it spread out i mean you, we want them to get their money but let it spread out i also said maybe you should look at going to a fee system like you did with the sanitary workers have a fee for fire have a fee, fee for the police and get the nonprofits to have to pay that fee but somewhere along the line you're going to have to do something way off the wall or you're going to have a tax revolt within the city i can see that coming very plainly we are very obstinate and when it comes to taxes we're more than obstinate we get mad so start working on off the wall projects maybe they won't come i tell you the mayor had a good idea to ask the sewer authority to resign but how many times have i come before you and asked you to ask the parking authority people on it to resign and you never did why would you start with well whatever you got an idea i'm not going to even try to guess what he got i mean the it's way out there what he wanted to do. Thank you. Thank you. Ozzy Quinn. Good evening. Good evening. The Scranton and Lackawanna County Taxpayers Association met last Tuesday and uh, we decided to uh, change the name, and unanimously we're going to change the name. We're doing that now with the Department of State to the uh, Scranton and Lackawanna County Voters and Citizens Association Incorporated. The reason being that uh, the, uh, the turnout of voters in, in the county, and uh, we want to try to put a little more emphasis on, the, uh, on getting the people out to vote. I mean, this isn't just the last elections for the last 10 years, and this is what we're trying to do. So, and they'll be down with the Scranton and Lackawanna County Voters and Citizens Association. Uh, also, we got a unanimous support for me to come here tonight, and that's one of the main reasons I'm here tonight, is for addressing council to see if the council will consider uh, amnesty program for delinquent taxpayers, homeowners in the city of Scranton. Uh, I, my research indicates that uh, over 200 states and municipalities, many in Pennsylvania, uh, have an amnesty program whereby they actually uh, come in and relieve, forgive for the past, for five years, the past five years, the uh, penalties and 50% uh, of the interest the taxpayer, delinquent taxpayer owes, okay? And they found that it was a cash cow in order to help them with their, fill their, uh, the, the holes in their budget, okay? Now, next month, we're gonna have 120 properties foreclosed upon in the county. 
I looked and I counted them up and 40 are in the city of Scranton. That's almost approximately one third of the cities are going to be a home and the city are going to be foreclosed upon by the banks for, for economic reasons. And uh, also next month, they're going to be a judiciary sale of over 100 properties in the city of Scranton, tax delinquent properties. And uh, my estimate is that there's going to be 500 properties next year that will be up for an upset sale for tax delinquency. And that sort of alarms me. And the only way that a, tax, uh, 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 a collector can get that money is either if there's sufficient funds, a person has sufficient funds to pay their back taxes, or if the proper and or if the property is saleable. Okay, if it's not saleable, if there aren't sufficient funds, they're not even going to approach that person. So I've had people call me, and they're very embarrassed. And a lot of them can't sleep at night because of the fact that they can't pay their taxes, all right? And they got so that they're beyond that they can't pay their taxes. But an amnesty sale will give them the opportunity to relieve them of, their, the, uh, of the penalties, 50% of the interest, and suppose they're, they, all the taxes will say back from 2009 back would be forgiven and they would pay from 2009 up. And it'll be a specific period of time, say three to four months for them to do that. We wouldn't drag it on. And uh, in addition, if uh, they're on, if they do pay the, if they do get on the M in the MC program, they can only get it at one time. It's not that you can come back and go back, okay? But there's a lot of research out there to be done about it, and uh, it's something that has been. Uh, a cash cow for a lot of municipalities. They've been receiving a lot of money that they thought they would never receive, and at the same time, it has helped a lot of homeowners to stay in their homes, especially in the city of Scranton. As we know, we have a $22,000 median income, as was pointed out this morning in the newspaper, and uh, a lot of senior citizens and everything. So, you know, and it really hurts these people, but they can't pay them. But I think if we give them an opportunity, they're going to come out and try to pay them. But so I would appreciate it if you look into that. Not only uh, the council, but I'm asking to collaborate with the mayor and the Scranton School District and the county. Because there are three taxing bodies, you know. And uh, if we all get together, maybe they could receive some money that they're never going to receive. They're never going to receive that money. There's no doubt about it. And uh, it gives them an opportunity to receive that money. Uh, I also want to say to ask the fact that I was asked to uh, bring about the fact that, you know, the backup material for the agenda, all right? Now, I read the agenda, what's coming on tonight, and Mr. McGough read it tonight. But the fact is, if the backup material is not available unless we go to the city clerk and we have to pay 25 cents a copy or per page, from what I understand. And a lot of people, for instance, might be interested in that Cedar Avenue situation, okay? But if it was on, if it was on the website, and this is 2014, I mean, the IT could scan that material and put it on the website just like the agenda. And there's no reason why it shouldn't be on. And I'm sure a lot of people, if they knew there's something was on that really affected them in their neighborhood, they might be here tonight, okay? And the backup material, you can, if you read the backup material, if you had the opportunity, you can come up here and you can intelligently speak about what the, uh, the issue is or what the resolution is up or whatever ordinance is up. But if you only have to wait until the time you come up here and what you can say amongst yourself, find out amongst yourself, it's very difficult. Thank you very much and I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Quinn. Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Miller, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, first off, I want to uh, thank Mayor Courtright for attending last week's meeting. He, that was one of his campaign promises. He said he was going to attend council meetings and uh, shows he's a man of his word, unlike his predecessor who said he was going to be the sixth councilman and only came here three times in 12 years, twice to beg for money, and the other time was to put Mr. McGough where he is. So uh, I'm proud of the mayor. I think he's going to do a great job. As long as council will work with him, I think the city's headed in the right direction. We just have to have some patience. 
Uh, Councilman Wexler, since you're the finance chair, do you know where we stand as far as getting the money to pay the, uh, the court award to the firefighters and police officers? No, I do not. Can uh, you look into that, please? Uh, I can look into it, but I'm sure it's not an easy answer to get. No. Okay, because uh, I know there was a... I mean, that, that's the biggest question of the city. I, well, I, I know there was a financial institution that they were working with, and I don't know. Right, I mean... I, I don't know if there's any update on it. Do you know anything, Mr. McGough? I was going to say that is... I do know that that's one of the things that the uh, Mr. Amoroso and the administration is is working at, uh, specifically with what investment firm or um, bank. I I do not know, but it, it it is an ongoing process. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just haven't heard anything in the news or in the paper or whatever. I I think really perhaps you may want to ask the mayor that question. I mean, we're here to answer questions as well. And the information comes through the mayor's office to us. So you could ask, uh, you know, perhaps you want to ask him or Dave Balzoni where they're at with that. Okay. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Sunday's paper was an article about uh, Fire Chief DeSarno. And I read where it said uh, Councilman Gawhan voted against him because he said he didn't think he'd be able to discipline the firefighters. Is that a factual statement, Councilman? I, I said I wasn't sure. That that was my question last week. I wasn't sure how that arrangement worked out. Yeah. That was one of my just one well, of my questions. Can I ask how old you are? How old am I? Yeah. Twenty six. Twenty six. Okay. Well, Chief Desarno has been a firefighter almost as long as you've been on this earth, and uh, he's a professional person. I don't think he'd have a problem disciplining firefighters. Right. Well, and can I just stop can, can I finish? Sure. I don't. And if you knew. I know many of our fighter fighters, firefighters, as I know Chief DeSarno for a long time. If you knew them, you would not, we're not talking about school children here. They're professionals. They're firefighters. There's not going to be a reason for him to discipline them. So I, I don't think you, you should have even question that. I think it was irresponsible on your part. And uh, as I said, Chief's a, a professional person. He's going to do a great job. I have all the faith in the world in him. And, uh, that's all I have. If you want to. No, I was in. just going to say I I wasn't questioning him or his abilities at all. I just simply had a question about whether or not he would be able to discipline other union members. I even last week I said I think he's going to do a great job as chief. I spoke to him personally and told him that. So I mean, just to address your your concern, I, I did not um, question his ability whatsoever. Well, then why did you vote against him? Because I had concerns about. Uh, what I just said and whether or not it will cost the city um, money in overtime since there would be bumping uh, throughout the department. Well, I, I think he's going to do a great job. And, uh, so do I. Best of luck to him. And as a matter of fact, he was on the news tonight talking about the water main break. And just everybody has to say prayers that there's no fire in those areas because he was really concerned where the water is going to come from. I'll have to bring in tankers or whatever, but that takes time. And just, uh, I hope everybody's safe during this period, because they said it could take days. All right, that's all I have tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> May I address, uh, it, it is my understanding, just to address the last uh, thing that Mr. Spindler said, and maybe I'm, um, Mr. Laska may know more, but uh, this afternoon I was told that the under an emergency certificate or whatever that the um, the, they were going to fill all of the tanker trucks and um, have them ready in case there was a problem um, where there was no water, so that they were preparing for it. Yeah, they have a contingency plan. Uh, yes. Extra companies and such for that situation. I was going to address this under motions, but I'll just mention it now. Um, I did receive a message from the mayor, and I, I know he messaged you as well, Councilman McGough. Um, right before the meeting that he spoke to the water company regarding the situation and also the water company informed them that um, detailed map will be coming out of who was affected. I know there have been, um, the Scranton Times has been reporting what areas of the city, but with, without any detail. They would say Kaiser Valley, but Kaiser Valley could be widely interpreted. Um, you know, does that include West Mountain? Doesn't it include West Mountain? Same thing for Southside. Southside is the second largest portion of the city. Um, so that should be coming shortly um, so we could find out exactly where the outages will be. 
And a big key is pay attention to your media outlets, newspaper, uh, TV stations. They'll they'll be right up to date for you on that. But but our officials have been meeting consistently since this situation started, and uh, there are water buffaloes. I understand Luzerne Street and. Uh, um, Pittston Avenue fire stations at this time. Um, Lee Morgan. Good evening, Council. Good evening. Um, the first thing I have here tonight is um, I have a site called um, Twitter at Lee Morgan 113 and I'm discussing city issues with residents and people outside the city and I hope people would access that and uh, start discussing what their opinions are about the city. Um, Mr. Spragula came up and uh, said a couple things and you know I, I listened and uh, talked about sharpening a pencil. I think it's time to break the pencil um, and you know Talking about a tax revolt in the city is really, I find that to be comical. And not that I don't find that Mr. Spraglia's statements are incorrect. Just that sheep don't revolt. And this city's been in trouble for 20 some plus years. And the people who vote have gone and continually backed failed plans and listen to misinformation, because I'm not going to say anybody's a liar, because I think that's a little harsh. But I think they've listened to misinformation for over two decades. And when, when people outside this area in other states and in other countries are laughing, and we're the laughing stock of everywhere you can imagine, I mean, to go outside the city and tell them you're a Scrantonian, they look at you like you're out of your mind. And at one time when I used to go outside the city in the 70s when I was much younger in early 80s, you know, they might have made a comment about the amount of prostitution that was here at one time when the mines were going. But now they're wondering what's going on with the people in this city. And, you know, for generations of Scrantonians for over 80 years to watch the decline of a city and their children and their grandchildren living, leaving the area, the only recommendation at this point that I give to Scrantonians is, if you have any money, give it to your children and send them out of here. Because we've listened to all these stories for all these decades, and it's just pathetic that people tell you that their whole family's gone. And I have a son that's going to graduate from college in a year. He's leaving. And I've come to this podium for over 20 years and talked about the issues that this consultant is bringing up now. These aren't secrets. These are things that have been known to the community or anybody in the community who wanted to know what was going on here. And the sad part is we've allowed the union leaders to pick our mayoral candidates and, and council candidates and go out and campaign for them and put them in these seats. That's my opinion. And it's a pathetic place we're at. And we just have to ask, as we raise fees and we talk about, talk about taxation, Walk around this city and see the amount of empty properties in this city. And then look at all the, all the projects. Look at, if this is not a shot at the council and not a shot at the mayor, but where is this plan? Where is this grand plan that these residents should come and back to bring a renaissance to this city? The first council meeting we had, we tried to revive the North Scranton project after millions of dollars were spent there. But what about all the residents in the city? I mean, we have a state representative who sued one of his constituents because he tripped over his constituent sidewalk. We have very serious infrastructure problems, not to highlight the water main that's broken. This city has struggled for decades, and we keep wa waltzing around and around an issue. The truth of the matter is that this problem is just so big that the only person that can solve this problem are the people who started it. Some of them are in Washington when they stopped doing federal revenue sharing. The other ones are in Harrisburg that created Act 47. And personally speaking for myself, I don't think that the former mayor challenged the unions on his own. 
The state wanted to smash those unions because all across this commonwealth, their pension plans are underwater, not just here, but everywhere. And the truth should be told that, look at bringing the minimum wage up from $10 an hour isn't going to solve any of the problems. Because what's happened to America as a young man who grew up in the 60s and the 70s is I've watched this country fall into poverty. Johnson's great plan for Appalachia to lift it out of poverty, this whole country's gone into poverty. Our standard of living has been very seriously compromised, and for one reason. We've created a political class of politicians who create laws and have no idea what they're doing and have no concern for it because they're backed by billionaires and multi-millionaires. And the average person on the street, he doesn't do $500 or $1,000 dinner, dinner plate uh, things for politicians. The ordinary people in this country have nothing left. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Is there anyone else who wishes to address council? Ms. Schumacher. Good evening, Marie Schumacher, city resident, snow shoveler, whatever. Um, Good evening. Tonight, um, I'd like to start with agenda item 7H. Um, what it does essentially is in the event that a member of this bargaining unit leaves or has left, the bargaining unit during 20 had left the bargaining unit during 2013 or December or through December 31st, 2014 to accept the appointment as city chief of police. Such bargaining unit member shall be entitled to a continue contributions to the pension plan under the same terms and conditions as a bargaining unit member and b if such a person for any reason elects to return to his or her former bargaining unit position, a such return shall be in the rank within the bargaining unit the person held prior to assuming the appointment to chief of police and with full <coughs> contract seniority accrued up to the date that such a person left the bargaining unit to accept the appointment. Does the fire, my question is, does the fire department have that same terminology in its contract? I don't know if it's the exact same ter terminology. I haven't seen it in writing, but it's always would, been would a, you? it's always been a, a it's always been that way in the fire department. In other words, you could go back in the ranks. And, okay. you know, in most cases, a uh, supervisor okay. doesn't like to go back they in the ranks, so usually they retire. But Okay, well, okay. But I'll probably get back to that in another week. But uh, Sunday's article in this Times Tribune uh, revealed that the acting fire chief's salary will be $69,366.00 nine cents for uh, 2014. Uh, I would like to know whether or not that salary includes longevity pay and will he also be paid overtime pay? So if you could research that for next week, I sure. will submit the question. Uh, further, uh, with respect to, oh, I'm sorry. Chief DeSarno also clarified that though he is acting chief in title, he works full time as a fire chief. Now this tells me two things. Either we are overstaffed in the fire department, something I find difficult to believe, or our, another firefighter will be filling in and we will be paying overtime, which I assume would add up to far more than the $50,000 that the uh, chief Chief's sal budgeted salary uh, would uh, would s save, for lack of a better term. So uh, now, despite the comments last week, it is clear that the mayor is circumventing the budget. Add to this the appearance of Mr. Hickey last year representing the mayor's transition team and stated in his finale, when you add up all of that, you come up to a $7.85 million revenue shortfall without looking at the expense side. Now, the mayor could have amended the budget to reduce the revenue uh, excesses that he believes are, they are 
that are under our, yeah, the excesses that are, are there. Uh, and he could have increased the fire chief's salary, but he chose instead to keep what his transition team uh, believes to be an unbalanced budget and uh, and he, he is cer certainly circumventing the approved budget, which according to the Home Rule Charter uh, was passed by ordinance and he is, has the duty to enforce ordinances. So he is totally circumventing the, uh, the, his duty on, on the way he's playing with the budget. Now, more uh, of this at a future meeting as I want to get to my main concern, which is our fire protection. In May 2012, the city added 30 firefighters who've been paid by a FEMA grant. This is a two-year contract, or a two-year grant, so it will be expiring in less than four months. Last week, Mr. Loscom stated that <clears throat> that was covered in the 2014 budget but I have the page of that budget and I don't find that. The, the 30 people were never, because they were not paid out of the operating budget, were listed by positions and number, but they were never in there. There is no bump up to retain those 30 people. So um, maybe during, during uh, motions, Mr. Loscom, if he knows where it is in the budget, could point that out to me because I couldn't find that. Uh, further, there is no indication <clears throat> on the FEMA list of awards that Scranton will be getting more funds. Have we actually applied for an extension? Um, and if I could just complete this. Uh, I'm also concerned about our, our changes of approval. Sorry, I can't read my own writing. I'm also concerned, I don't know. Oh, that our, our chances of approval of an extension may be diminished because our 2012 audit report, uh, per the Times Tribune, notes that the city did not prepare or file timely semi-annual reports regarding the SAFER grant. I'm concerned tonight, especially for our residents and those uh, of other municipalities who will be at risk if they are without water and in some cases without heat, in which case they may do things that will add to the fire risk and the entire city if the 30 safer grant employers employees are not retained um, so I would either like to know how they are being how those 30 are being retained or I would like to know the plan for operating with 133 firefighters thank you thank you Ms. Schumacher would um, and, and again I ask that um, any questions that we have during citizens participation I, I will get them in tomorrow. if you would yes thank you, thank you. anyone else yeah. good evening council Doug Miller Scranton um, good evening. didn't really have any intention on coming down here uh, but uh, as I sat back the last few weeks at uh, a lot of the events that transpired uh, certainly are enough uh, to scare you um, and you know, I honestly say I don't even know where to begin, but I'll start with uh, the issue that we just uh, heard from Mrs. Schumacher, and that's in regards to uh, the SAFER grant. You know, we, we understand we were very fortunate to have um, Senator Casey uh, reach out and offer his assistance at a time, a very critical time, uh, when we uh, you know, obviously had less firemen on the street. Uh, we faced uh, uh, firehouse closures. Uh, very serious issues and we were able to have some assistance from the federal government who reached out and were willing to help us out unfortunately uh, for whatever reason politics uh, became involved and uh, if we could all recall we gave half of that money back and we had much debate over that and whether or not that should have taken place and so moving forward as we look into I believe May this grant will expire we're looking at 30 less firemen on the street and I would have to say, it would be a, a sure bet to say that we're going to have some discussion on whether or not firehouses are going to be closed again. And the issue I have is I don't, I personally don't feel the federal government is going to take us serious this time. And the reason I say that is because we gave half of that money back. And, you know, I, I think that's a very serious issue that we have to take a close look at and how we want to address that moving forward. 
because if this does fall through and we're, we have a, an inability to once again uh, receive this grant, uh, we have to find a solution. And I think now is the time to begin looking at that, looking at a, a plan B, um, because I, I, I have a scary feeling that that's probably what's going to transpire here. And so uh, we need to really sit down and take a look at what direction we want to move in here. Um, I'm going to move on to some other issues because I do have quite a bit. Um, I want to talk about uh, CaseCon and Mr. Mike Judge. Uh, this morning we were made aware uh, in this morning's article that uh, the city terminated the contract with CaseCon and Mr. Michael Judge. Uh, as we could all recall last year, CaseCon and Mr. Judge were brought in uh, to assist the city in obtaining a TAN uh, to keep us afloat uh, for this year until tax revenues come in. And I just want to remind everyone that if it weren't for CaseCon and Mr. Judge, in the work of Attorney Hughes and the previous council, this city never would have obtained a TAN, whether you want to believe that or not. I just want to inform everyone of that because nobody else wanted to do any business with the city. So I think we should really take a look at that and that we're very fortunate to have obtained that TAN because if we didn't have this TAN, uh, this administration would have came into office uh, with no money to work with. And we'd once again be looking at payless paydays like we did in the summer of 2012. And we'd have some serious challenges uh, in the beginning of, of this year. Uh, next, I I'd like to discuss this consultant issue. You know, when I, when I saw this, I couldn't help but laugh a little bit. And, you know, I try not to laugh because I know, you know, the, the challenges that we face financially uh, are very serious, and I take them serious. But, you know, the decision by this administration to bring a consultant in, I think, is just absolutely ludicrous. Why do we need a consultant from New Jersey to come forward, okay, and tell us things that we already know. Nothing's new. We, are, we know quite well that we have a pension shortfall. It's not a secret. We've known about that for quite some time. He's not just coming in miraculously telling us things that we, did, we didn't know ourselves, okay? We know we have a lack of revenue. We have an inability to bring revenue into the city. We knew that too. We can go back to 2012 and take a look at that for those of us that forget lack of revenue. We know we have an issue with the nonprofits. We've been discussing that for decades. We don't, meet, we don't need Mr. Amoroso to come in and tell us that. I mean, where are we going here? We understand the challenges we face. Many of us have been involved in the community for a long time. You know, we have an administration, we have a mayor who's been involved in this community for a long time. He sat on council for six years. He was there when a lot of this stuff became, became known and, and, and the issues became, uh, you know, to the forefront. And so my question is, is where, where's the plan? Why did we just go through a process of, you know, electing a mayor, electing a council, and now we're bringing a consultant in from New Jersey who's giving us information that we already know? And so what I want to know tonight is I, I'm, I'm very curious to know what the plan is here. What's the vision for this city? Is it going to be the same tired rhetoric? Because it seems like we're going down that track again of just recycling the same old thoughtless ideas and recycling the same individuals over and over again and we expect a different result. I mean the mayor's already acknowledged he has no vision. I mean it, it's ridiculous. And then to say to acknowledge that he wasn't aware that the contract stated that Mr. Amoroso was brought in to explore the sale of the sewer authority. I mean as the chief executive officer of the city don't you think you have an obligation to review a contract before you enter into it? There's just many question marks that I have, and I, you know, I know we're early in the year here, and you know, already it's, it's, it's disappointing what I'm seeing here. I, I really thought we were going somewhere, but it seems that we've become so incompetent that we can't even manage our own city. We need somebody to come in and babysit us, show us how to put a budget together, and put two and two together. It's pretty pathetic where we are today, but I just hope moving forward that we can come up with some solutions ourselves, because we've heard many good ideas before. Unfortunately, in the past, uh, we never followed through on them. And I'm going to end it with this, uh, you know, Mr. Gauhan, I believe, you know, unfortunately you've been unfairly criticized with, uh, you know, your stance on the, uh, the acting fire chief issue, and I just want to throw my two cents in it. Um, I don't think anybody's making this a personal issue with Mr. DeSarno. Nobody's questioning his leadership or his ability to manage a fire department. I think the only issue that people have is, you know, I personally don't feel rank and file should be dispersing order amongst other rank and file, and I believe that's the issue. We're not questioning his integrity or his ability to lead the department. I'm sure he could do a, a fantastic job. But I just hope moving forward we have a true vision for this city. I hope the mayor
can put that plan to good use and, and hopefully we could turn this city around but uh, I don't have much confidence thank, thank you. you mr. Miller thank you is there anyone else who wishes to address council fifth order 5a motions mr. Wexler uh, yes mr. president um, I was pleased to see a, the editorial in the paper today where Chief DeSarno and representatives from VPNL were able to meet and discuss improvements to the response time in case of fires. Uh, this is how this problem is going to get fixed with dialogue, uh, not name calling or finger pointing, and I was quite see, uh, pleased to see that that happened. Uh, in addition, um, last night a few of us attended a, a seminar about the Marcellus Shale uh, industry and the impact that it possibly could have on Scranton. Uh, although we don't have any Marcellus Shale in our in our area, there may be some benefits uh, in terms of business opportunities, and I, I think the county and the city should pursue those as as best we can. Uh, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Rogan. Thank you. Um, a few brief comments. One: some residents were wondering what the total amount of um, government funds that were given for the North Scranton High School project. The total amounts that were awarded for this project is $7.2 million, and this is going back decades. Um, the total amount dispersed was $3.2 million. There is an RCAP grant um, that was awarded but has not been dispersed. So that's why there's the discrepancy between the amount awarded and the, the amount actually um, dispersed. A um, couple quick items. Um, I first want to thank a few people, um, our the council, city council staff, our DPW, and uh, uh, State Representative Marty Flynn's office. I know everyone's focused on the water main break in South Scranton, which is going to affect uh, a good chunk of the city, but there also is one on Mary Street in North Scranton um, that it was a, a water main break that was repaired, and then it was leaking. And I was sent by a resident pictures of ice coating the road, coating the sidewalks, and um, thanks to um, our office and in the DPW, they, they have been out there salting every two hours until the water company can get a representative there um, to fix that. And uh, again, thank you to Representative Flynn's office. They helped us um, with contacting the water company to make sure that this is on their list. So the residents in North Scranton, um, you know, the, the issue is being addressed. Um, and just to piggyback on something that Councilman Wexler mentioned, um, a few of us did attend the event at Lackawanna College regarding um, the impact, the economic impact of um, Marcella Shale in our region. Um, unfortunately, we don't have gas under the city of Scranton like our, our neighbors to the north do, but th there is opportunity. Um, there's opportunity with many jobs that are being created. Um, I, I had the opportunity to, I think it was about two months previous, was another part in the same series at Johnson College they focused on a program they're having, a two-year program where they train students to work in that industry. And upon graduation, the average salaries are in the fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 range. That's a starting salary um, after just two years at, at Johnson College. So that's definitely something that, that could help the city. And one other item that I mentioned previously, and it would be costly initially to start, is the process of converting city vehicles to run off natural gas instead of um, gasoline. Up in, um, when I initially looked into it, the price difference was almost, was almost a 50% savings um, between the cost of using CNG, compressed natural gas, or even liquefied natural gas as the technology improves compared to using diesel in our trucks. Um, on top of that, it's actually better for the engines in the vehicles and it's more environmentally friendly because there is less um, emissions with the natural gas. Um, it's something long term, um, but it is something that, um, you know, there are grants available that we can look into and I would love to see the possibility of having a city natural gas pump. Um, Ford recently came out with um, an F-150 that individuals could buy that runs off natural gas. Um, unfortunately, none of us could buy it because the, the infrastructure isn't set up. Up in um, north of us, there is three or four um, stations for compressed natural gas, and also I believe LT Verastro and Old Forge is working on one, converting his vehicles. Um, but it is something that the city um, definitely needs to take advantage of the cost savings on that. Um, but hopefully um, that's something we could look into 
And I know there is um, another part in that series that we were at um, focusing on the educational aspect, training, job training for people to work in that field. So that's um, something we could look forward to. And hopefully the city of Scranton could attract some of these, these businesses into the city. And Mr. Durkin from the chamber seemed optimistic that that's something that they will be working on. Um, that's all I have. I will have a couple comments on some agenda items, but that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lasko. Yes, thank you. Uh, just to reiterate on the uh, water break situation, um, the city departments, uh, public works, fire department, police department, uh, license inspections have a contingency plan together. I believe there has been an emergency declaration. Um, I don't have any hotline number per se to call if you have an emergency, but I think uh, you know we're smart enough to know what the emergency is if it's a health emergency or a problem with uh, anything like that. We could call 911. Um, if you do have a heating emergency or anything, you could call our license inspections department. This, you know, there, there's still a lot of details uh, flowing in and out. It's supposed to affect uh, at least 8,000, uh, you know, properties at this point. As it was stated earlier, there will be a more defined list, and, and probably the best way to, to find out is through your local media, uh, the written and the televised media. Uh, other, other than that, you know, when our offices are open during the day, uh, you could call the appropriate office if it's uh, of a concern to you on a certain, you know, a certain situation. But uh, the departments have been meeting pretty steadily today to, to get everything together should there be any kind of, of problems regarding this situation. Um, Again, it may last until Monday. It may be done before then. Um, I just wanted to see if there's anything else I wanted to add to that. But unfortunately, it's winter. This stuff happens. This happens to be a pretty large size main. And I don't know how else to explain this, but just to shut that main down has taken quite a bit of time. You just can't crank them down without affecting all the other other lines around. So it has probably taken 24 hours to just shut that main down before they could dry it out and, and start the repairs. But um, PA Water, PA American Water has contacted most of the people, if not all of them, probably more people than will be affected just to put them on notice. And again, you know, as, as the list is defined, um, Again, there's emergency water at uh, the fire station on Luzerne Street. You have to bring your own containers. And the uh, fire station on Market Street. If I find out any more, I'll, uh, I'll forward that to you. But uh, that's about all I have at this point. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laskin. Mr. Gohan? I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Um, a, a, a number of items uh, just to respond to some things that were said and uh, also to update a, a number of things. Um, first of all, as far as the CaseCon, uh, the termination of the contract of CaseCon, um, yes, it was uh, terminated as was reported and um, whether it was a positive or a negative thing. It was something that I believe needed to be done since the, since the reason for hiring CaseCon in the first place had been accomplished. Um, their services were, in fact, uh, not needed. Um, and as far as the TN that was negotiated um, by CaseCon and uh, for two th 2014, the, the stated interest for the TAN is 4.5%. 4, 4 when you add to that the cost of issuance, then it goes to 9.1%. The interest on it would, is going to be $562,000. The cost of issuance 
was $574,350, um, of which Case Con received $156,250. Um, the cost of issuance for this TAN was extremely expensive. Um, prior TANs did not um, come close to those costs. Uh, and while it needed to be done, we were, the, the cost of this, the TAN for 2014, and the method of payment is, uh, for want of a better word, very punitive. Um, we needed to do it, and um, it, 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 it was costly when you compare it to prior year TANs and also compare it to uh, funding or loans that were received or obtained by the school district and other municipalities. So um, I, I, I think we need to put some things into perspective when we talk about you know, whether CaseCon needed to be extended or whether terminating the contract was, was a, a positive thing. Um, as far as the SAFER grant uh, the people have brought up, uh, I, I know uh, Mr. Loscombe probably knows more about it than I and is, is closer to that, but I, this is an issue that everyone knew existed. And um, the, uh, the new administration is aware of the, the situation and um, are tr trying to determine how they will resolve that situation. I know that there, um, the possibility of reapplying for the SAFER grant, that was even talked about last year. But this is something that's basically a, an administrative function at this point in time, um, whether to reapply or not. And I know that also the, the union is um, looking into reapplying, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it, it is something that is being addressed, and hopefully uh, we do have some resolution to that prior to those 30-some firefighters being terminated or you know, taken, off, um, taken off trucks and, and thus jeopardizing um, you know, our, our fire protection. Uh, As far as the uh, water main break, uh, I'm kind of acutely aware of it. Uh, I received a call from my father uh, yesterday morning uh, claiming that he was truly living on River Street. Uh, the, the, the main break took place right in front of his house. And um, they have been working on that since yesterday morning and I I got up this morning to take my daughter to the airport at 4.30, and they were still working on it at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, so this, this, they have been extremely diligent in trying to you know, rectify that situation, and yes, hopefully it will be um, resolved you know, sooner than later, but it is a very difficult um, process that I know they're going through, um, and hopefully um, like I said, it will be resolved quickly. Uh, one other thing that came up during, uh, that was mentioned during caucus today, uh, the um, pension payments. Um, last year, at the end of 2013, a, a payment of $4 million was made toward um, the pension, leaving a balance of $2 million for the current year. Um, that payment, the payment of $2 million is going to be made by the city in a relatively short time, uh, I believe by the end of the week. What they're doing is that they're going to make a $2 million payment, the, the pension payment, and withhold the amount on penalties and interest, and hopefully, as uh, Mr. Bolzoni um, told us, hopefully negotiate for a reduction or a forgiveness of those penalties and interest. Um, 
and if, if that does not occur then make the the final payment but uh, the six million dollar payment will be fulfilled by um, at the end of this week or the beginning of next week uh, I did attend as uh, one of the speakers said I did attend a commissioners meeting this week a number of interesting things uh, were were mentioned at the meeting uh, and I will say that th this was not a first time event for you know City Council uh, we have in the past members of council have met with members of the commissioner or with the commissioners or members of their staff on a variety of projects uh, you know mr. Rogan had uh, been in contact with them over the um, extension of the uh, discount period. discount periods thank you um, so we have been working with the with the commissioners and it I, I was happy to attend their meeting and speak to the commissioners and get a reassurance from them that they too are um, concerned with the, the status of the city the status of the county and are willing to you know work with us and with the school district to as the newspaper quoted you know work toward the you know the betterment of the welfare and safety of the you know people of the city of Scranton and Lackawanna County a couple of the things that were mentioned it was very interesting one of the one of the things that they gave a proclamation to a group from I believe it was Valley View High School for a recycling program they collected used um, shopping bags plastic shopping bags I don't know how many of us have stacks of those bags you know st stuffed inside you know one another in our homes I know I do and it's like what do you do with them uh, you can't possibly use them but apparently they can be recycled they collected one class alone collected over 11,000 plastic shopping bags and then they, they one of the things they said was they had to find uh, someone who would then uh, recycle those uh, I, I guess it's not an easy process and not everyone can do it um, but it was an interesting project that was conducted at Valley View um, high school and I, I think the total number was around 30,000 or something you know shopping bags that they collected so maybe it's something that you know city of uh, you know Scranton School District uh, could look into and uh, other um, <coughs> you know organizations uh, rather than putting those things in the garbage again maybe they can be recycled uh, the other thing that was mentioned and, and I believe it's something um, that does concern us although it's right at this point in time outside of the city of Scranton but is the the occurrence of the or the reoccurrence of mine fires uh, in Lackawanna County um, it was not only mentioned that it, it's a danger to the communities in which these fires are you know currently burning but um, the air quality of all of Lackawanna County is being affected by this and um, it's something that the county commissioners were asking people if they would contact you know their local uh, state and federal representatives to get behind a program to um, extinguish these mine fires I know that's cost it's been costly in the past but it it it, it does speak to the uh, certainly the safety and um, the health of all of people of Lackawanna County uh, so on behalf of the County Commissioners I would encourage anyone um, to contact their state and federal representatives to uh, let them know that there is a concern in our area for um, this problem and last uh, well maybe not lastly uh, at the Pell meeting this week uh, again we we meet regularly uh, with Pell and have been doing so over the past number of years a number of things were brought up most of them ways in which uh, we can deal with expenditures and revenues 
one of the things that we talked about was the rental registration program and delinquent um, delinquencies for rental registration. I'm meeting tomorrow morning with the treasurer and with the NRS to uh, one of the topics being is it is it worthwhile uh, given the amount of money that's made that is out there and with the inventory of properties that we have is it worth uh, is it cost effective to go after these delinquencies um, it, and if not for this year if if it's a program that we can look at for um, future years the other thing that came up was the Comcast contract um, there are a number of uh, me being one uh, unclear as to what the current contract is um, as we went through last year there was a lot of discussion there were some there were two kind of varying contracts that um, never really got resolved and so we're not it's unclear under which contract we are operating. And so the um, tech department and the um, business uh, administrator's office are investigating that. And if, if, it's, if we are operating under a prior contract, is it something that we need to re renegotiate? And, and can it be of benefit to the city to re renegotiate that contract? Um, Another thing that came up, I know we mentioned uh, one of the big problems in the city is the condition of equipment, fire equipment, DPW equipment, police cars, um, basically um, old and um, kind of patched together. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that we brought up was the possibility of over a short term, is it is it possible to lease equipment rather than an outright purchase of equipment? Would it be, again, more cost effective, again, in the short term, for leasing uh, equipment that would um, allow for a more efficient operation of all of the services in the city? And again, it was something that was going to be investigated um, it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but it, but it may be possible and it may be um, something that can be done and that will allow us to improve the quality of the equipment that our, you know, public service people are, are using. Um, and the last thing that was mentioned at the, the Pell meeting was um, SAPA which is included in the revised recovery plan. I know this was something that was defeated a number of years ago, um, but it is a, still a program that has some viability. Um, hopefully we can revisit it. Um, whether it is approved or not, it, it is something that may be of benefit to the city. And again, it's being investigated and um, hopefully in the relatively near future, uh, representatives from SAPA are, we will invite them to a, to a caucus and have a sort of a, a re-presentation of the program and uh, allow us to uh, perhaps, you know, look at that again and, and see if it's something that we, we at this time can um, find some benefit from. Um, we, we all received a letter, I, I'm sorry, I, from uh, residents on Prescott Avenue that were looking for uh, possibility of permit parking. <clears throat> it, it is my, I, I believe that we received last year a response from the police department concerning the viability of permit parking in that block of Prescott Avenue. I do not have that letter with me. Um, I will see if we can find that response and, and provide a response to the people. Um, I'll, I'll give it to Mr. Gaughan so that he can um, 
um, you know, provide a response to, to those people. But uh, I, I do know that we did receive a response, and I'm not sure exactly how it was worded, so I don't want to um, mislead anyone. And the last thing, and, and very quickly, I, I thought we would have a chance during caucus to discuss this, but we haven't. We did not. Mr. Rogan and I um, talked about it, and I, I believe Mr. Gaughan and I talked about it uh, at one point in time. A and the possibility of creating a, uh, uh, for one, a, a term, a, a name, a central neighborhood association, uh, a, a group that would representatives from the various neighborhood associations to meet on a whatever basis, monthly basis, uh, but, but set up something so that these groups can meet together um, and, um, you know, just uh, help each other in organization, perhaps provide information to the city as to problems that exist in the neighborhoods, um, I'm not, we're, we're not quite sure what we're looking for is, first of all, just <clears throat> provide an organizational type of meeting, sit down and see if it's something that will work and, and can work. Um, perhaps uh, during the week uh, we'll talk more about it and next week perhaps set up a time for and a, and a place to, to do that, to meet and to see about an or, you know, setting up that organization. But, but it's something that has been talked about in the past, and I think it's something that can be um, beneficial. And I'm sorry to have taken so long, but uh, that is all. Mr. McGough, can I just add to what you just spoke? Uh, yes. Today I did receive an email that there is a, a neighborhood summit meeting, I believe, going to happen on February 25th oh. uh, at police headquarters. I don't have the details right in front of me. Uh, but in the past, there's been some, it's neighborhood groups and crime watches that are meeting on a, on a maybe a quarterly basis. Okay. And I think that is scheduled for February 25th, if, I'm, if, I, if I read my email correctly. Maybe I'm being redundant uh, <laughs> no, with you're, this. No, you're not, because it is something that needs to get the weight of the, of the city administration behind it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Mrs. Reed. Thank you. 5B for introduction, a resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Financing Authority First Amendment to grant number, as noted, and financing agreement for a local share account grant for the project known as Cedar 500, and to execute any and all documents necessary to change the grant to a loan pursuant to the amendment to the contract. I'll, at this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Um, just briefly, uh, a, a representative from uh, United Neighborhood Centers uh, came briefly to council to explain um, what this was, and uh, we'd like to thank him for his participation and the information that he provided. 5C. Uh, all those in favor oh, of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. Excuse me. 5C <laughs> for introduction, a resolution authorizing the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, through the Office of Business Administration to make application for a grant through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Department of Community and Economic Development, a community development block grant, CDBG grant, for financial aid under authority of the Municipalities Financial Recovery Act, Act 47 of 1987, as amended, and if the grant application is successful, authorize the mayor and the other appropriate city officials to execute any and all documents necessary to accept and disperse the grant funds. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Um, also, uh, uh, during caucus, uh, Mr. Bolzoni, uh, business administrator, did come to our caucus and explain the, um, the purpose of this grant and how it would be utilized. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5D for introduction, a resolution, appointment of Dominic Giorgetti, 
3015 Pittston Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, as Chairman of the Civil Service Commission, effective January 24th, 2014. Mr. Giorgetti's term will expire with the term of Mayor William L. Corwright. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of the council number 8, 2014, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept and disperse grant funds from the Walmart Foundation in the amount of $2,000 to purchase toys and coats from the Scranton Police Department's annual toy coat drive. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6B, reading by title, file of the council number 9, 2014, an ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to extend the deadline for the discount period on real estate taxes from February 28th, 2014 to March 31st, 2014, in order to allow taxpayers ample time to pay real estate taxes at the discount rate. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question. I make a motion to suspend the uh, rules. I think we need to vote on it first. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anxious. On the question. <laughs> All those in favor aye. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. Now I make a motion to suspend <laughs> the rules uh, to move 6B to the seventh order for final passage. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6C, reading by title, file of the council number 10, 2014, an ordinance amending file of the council number 100, 2009, an ordinance amending file of council number 91, 2002, an ordinance as amended providing for the establishment of parking meter zones within the city of Scranton, establishing hours of operation, providing for the installation of meters and parking meter rates, authorizing the enforcement of parking ordinances and providing penalties for violations thereof by amending sections 3A to reflect the change in hourly rate at parking meters from $1 to $1.25 per hour. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6C pass reading by title. Second. On the question. Uh, I know Mr. Loscom had uh, some questions concerning this uh, last time. Um, did we receive any response as to uh, the nature of those meters? And I, I don't believe so. Um, I, I, for your edification, I, I would say that uh, perhaps we can you know, move this forward. And if we don't receive a response by next sure. week, uh, that we can, you know, at least uh, look into uh, either tabling or um, amending somehow. No problem. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council number 1, 2014, amending file of the council number 6 1976 entitled an ordinance as amended imposing a tax for general revenue purposes on the transfer of real property situate within the city of scranton prescribing and regulating the method of evidencing the payment of such tax conferring powers and imposing duties upon certain persons and providing penalties by imposing the rate of the realty transfer tax at two and nine tenths percent for calendar year 2014. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. 
Mr. Rory? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7B for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council Number 2, 2014, amending file of the Council Number 7, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, imposing a mercantile license tax of two mills for the year 1976 and annually thereafter upon persons engaging in certain occupations and businesses therein, providing for its levy and collection and for the issuance of mercantile licenses, conferring and imposing powers and duties upon the tax collector of the city of Scranton and imposing penalties by imposing the mercantile license tax at one mill for calendar year 2014. What is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. This is read perhaps before you go. Um, I skipped the page. Um, I would like to go back and just say I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. Thank you. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council Number 3, 2014, amending file of the Council Number 8, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended providing for the general revenue by imposing a tax at the rate of two mills upon the privilege of operating or conducting business in the city of Scranton as measured by the gross receipts therefrom, requiring registration and payment of the tax as condition to the conducting of such business, providing for the levy and collection of such tax, prescribing such requirements for returns and records, conferring powers and duties upon the tax collector, and imposing penalties by imposing the business privilege tax at the rate of one mill for the calendar year 2014. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted again. <laughs> <laughs> 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, file of the Council Number 4, 2014, amending file of the Council Number 100, 1976, entitled An Ordinance, as amended, levying general and special taxes for the fiscal year 1977 by setting the millage for the year 2014. At this time, I'll, or excuse me, what is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E, for consideration by the Committee on Finance, for adoption, file of the Council number 5, 2014, amending file of the Council Number 17, 1994, entitled An Ordinance as Amended, authorizing the governing body of the City of Scranton to enact a waste disposal and collection fee for the purpose of raising revenue to cover the waste disposal and collection costs incurred by the City of Scranton for the disposal of refuse by imposing a waste disposal and collection fee of $300 for calendar year 2014. I make a motion to amend item 7E per the following amendment. Section 3, fees. All fees fixed by this subsection shall be payable semi-annually. Fees paid on a semi-annual basis shall be due May 1st, 2014 and September 1st, 2014 in the amount of $150 per payment. Item 4. The second semi-annual payment of $150 due on September 1st, 2014 shall become null and void in the event the city, by proper legislation, adopts a per-bag waste collection fee on or before August 1st, 2014.
2014. If a per bag fee is adopted by the city, the waste collection fee shall be charged and collected pursuant to that ordinance. If the city fails to adopt such per, per bag waste collection fee, then the second semi-annual fee of $150 shall be due on September 1st, 2014. Second. On the question. All those in favor of the motion to amend item 7E signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7F. 7E. Sorry. Second. As amended. As amended. As amended. Still second. On the question, I, I do want to mention, uh, again, Mr. Rogan brought it up during um, caucus. It, there is currently no legislation concerning a per bag fee. Um, this is, there are a lot of discussions about, uh, you know, possibilities for different forms of collection, and this was put in simply to um, alleviate any problems that may occur if, in fact, something were to change um, during the course of the year. And, and Mr. Balzoni did a great job explaining that to us. That, and he also mentioned that Pell and the administration are currently reviewing um, how they want to proceed moving forward on the payment of the garbage fee, whether it is something that is done um, the way we have it now, where you pay it twice a year, or whether it breaks out into a quarterly or bi-monthly payment like your sewer bill or per bag um, fee or a hybrid per bag fee and standard fee. There's a, uh, many different ways um, that this fee could be implemented um, and the, the city is reviewing those currently. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. As amended. Item 7E as amended legally and lawfully adopted. 7F for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council Number 6, 2014, amending file of the Council Number 145 of 2007, entitled An Ordinance Renaming the Emergency and Municipal Services Tax, EMST, to Local Service Tax, LST, and by imposing a withholding of $52 for the calendar year 2014. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7F. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council number 7, 2014. Amending file of the Council Number 17, 2012, as amended, entitled Establishing a Registration Program for Residential Rental Properties, requiring all owners of residential rental, pro rental properties to designate an agent for service of process, and prescribing duties of owners, agents, and occupants, directing the designation of agents, establishing fees for the cost associated with the registration of rental property, and prescribing penalties for violations by amending Section 9, Fees, to include the increases in the annual rental registration fee to $50 per unit and the annual permit fee to $150 per site. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7G. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 7H for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 14, 2014, amending Resolution Number 604, 1999, entitled Authorizing the Mayor and Other Appropriate City Officials to Execute and Enter into a Collective Bargaining Agreement between EB German Lodge Number 2, 
of the Fraternal Order of Police and the City of Scranton for the calendar years January 1, 1996 to December 31, 2002 in order to amend Article 26, Section 7 per a memorandum of agreement between the parties. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7H. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Moscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7H legally and lawfully adopted. 7I for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number 15, 2014, approving the financing by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority of certain capital projects for the benefit of Marywood University, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and the area served by Marywood University to have the project provided by and financed through the authority, designating the mayor of the city or, in his absence, the president or vice president of the city council as the person to act on behalf of the city council as the applicable elected representative within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, authorizing such mayor of the city or the president or vice president of the city council of the city to take certain actions on behalf of the city council of the city as such applicable elected representative and authorizing other necessary and appropriate action. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of Item 7I. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare Item 7I legally and lawfully adopted. 7J for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number 16, 2014, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept grant funds from the Department of Environmental Protection, DEP, Act 101 Recycling Program Performance Grant in the amount of $58,665 for the City of Scranton Recycling Program. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of Item 7J. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare Item 7J legally and lawfully adopted. 7K for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption. Resolution number 17, 2014, accepting a donation of $4,000 from Scranton Area Foundation presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7K. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7K legally and lawfully adopted. 7L for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, resolution number 18, 2014, accepting a donation of $100 from Anthracite Heritage Museum and Iron Furnaces Associates, presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. <coughs> What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairman for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7L. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7L legally and lawfully adopted. 7M for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 19, 2014, appointment of Paul Duffy, 811 Colfax Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, to the Civil Service Commission, effective January 17, 2014. Mr. Duffy's term will expire with the term of Mayor William L. Courtright. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7M. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. 
Mr. Gone? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7M legally and lawfully adopted. 7N for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 20, 2014, Appointment of Jeff Mackey, 1422 West Gibson Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the Civil Service Commission, effective January 17, 2014. Mr. Mackey's term will expire with the term of Mayor William L. Corwright. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7N. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7N legally and lawfully adopted. 7O, formerly 6B, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of the Council number 9, 2014, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to extend the deadline for the discount period on real estate taxes from February 28, 2014 to March 31st, 2014 in order to allow taxpayers ample time to pay real estate taxes at the discount rate. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Finance? As Chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7-0. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7-0 legally and lawfully adopted. Any other business? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned.